But the origins of the story, because it sounds like it was quite personal. Sure, sure, yeah, it's definitely a, a personal story. I mean, um, I think there's a lot to this story. I think it's sort of this big ensemble movie. There's a sort of a sprinkling of sci-fi and these other genres kind of in it. But at its core, it really is a love story, and um, this sort of like intergenerational love story. And I think um, that was inspired by my grandparents. Uh, they met when they were 16. We're together for their whole lives until they passed away a few years ago. Um, that last credit there, I don't know if you noticed, uh, was it's the film was dedicated to my grandfather. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely like that chunk of it um, was hugely inspired by my grandparents. So Jen, yes, you get the script. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your first thought? I mean, this was uh, pre-vaccine uh, time in the pandemic, so. I got the script and I was like, I, if it's half good, I'm doing it. <laughs> I just gotta get out of this house. Um, but I really, um, I really loved the script and I thought it was super ambitious. Uh, I, you know, talking to Colin, there was um, an enthusiasm there and, uh, I, you know, there's like, 10 different kind of notes or themes or ideas that um, I saw that like if we could hit half of them, you know, this is a, an indie, like we, we were talking earlier, like, I mean, there was a, a, a moment where I posted a photo of uh, a pasta strainer. Yes, I remember that. And this. it was, and I was like, this is like, true indie and like everyone there was we were using the pasta strainer as like a light filter yeah so, so it was, it was feel like science I guess. <laughs> but i remember thinking if they could hit if colin could hit five of ten it would be a good movie but i i sincerely feel like uh he hit it on you know on every kind of note it was really amazing and after this, now everything's going to be a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, let's actually talk about that a little bit. One of the things that I find so, um, not the disappointment part, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that I find so, so charming about the film, I mean, yes, it is ambitious, it's philosophical, I mean, there's a lot going on, but then there's also this very handmade quality to it. You know, it's not, it's not slick, the effects aren't, you know, it's not, I mean, it, it feels, you know, handmade. It feels it feels very warm. It feels intimate. Um, it feels like it was fun to make, even. Oh, um, but uh, but but I feel like that kind of that helps sell the the ambition in many ways. You know, something very slick that was really ambitious. You know, you, you, like your bullshit detector would go off. Whereas something <laughs> like this, it's just you. It just the film just kind of envelops you, which I think is is wonderful. Yeah, well, I mean, look, yeah, I, I owe, like, a huge amount of credit to uh, the crew who really um, put this all together, like, took, took my crazy neurotic, like, ideas and kind of actually made them realistic, um, many of whom are sitting in here, including um, what I want to, well, are we going to talk about the costumes? I was going to say, I had, I had a great question about the costumes in the, in the other Q&A, and they were like, well, you know, the costume designer is <laughs> So, yeah, our costume team is sitting right there, Joy and Elena, stand up. Uh, yeah, there. Um, yeah, and and there, what we had a great time, sort of like figuring out how to art direct this movie, um, and I, we owe a lot also to um, you know Kylie and Kira and yes everybody Nicole, um, all these other people um, who. She's here. Every all, a whole art team just stand up. Everybody just stand up. Who was a part of the movie? Derek, get up. Everybody, up, uh, stand up. Some of these people, I don't even know what they look like because they look. wore a mask. The <laughs> look at this. Look at all these. Yes, what's up? I haven't seen you guys ever. Thank you so much for yes, right there. There's the art team. Additional art team members. Um, Maddie. Yeah, I I um. Yeah, it was a, it was it was a real challenge for us, but I think actually in a lot of ways, like this idea of like making a movie that was set in three different time periods all at once, um, sort of without telling you, was a way of kind of like like it was a challenge, but it was also like I think a big reason why people had like 
fun making this like in a sort of way because there was like something about that was like different it was like how can we construct something like that and so we kept coming back to this idea of like it's not set in a time it's set in a tone and um i think that was like important in like setting up the way in which this like snow globe like world could exist um you know and be cohesive but also be you know um unique and nostalgic and you know that kind of thing yeah, and the, the thing we were specifically talking about with the costuming was this was something I noticed the second time I saw the film, which was, you know, the the, the characters are often wearing the, the same outfit but in different colors in, in various scenes. But as as you were saying, Jim, it's not it's not a thing that like it, not rubbing your face in it. Like it's just, it's just this little grace note that you know you might catch the next time you see the movie, which is just I, I it just adds this whole other element of of just a lot of care being put in this film, which I thought was. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that that idea, like, especially with costumes, like, you know, I mean, they do it in things like The Simpsons or Bob's Burgers, right, where these costumes, you know, these characters are wearing these things for, you know, 30 years, and you don't ever question it. Um, and uh, we tried it out in this movie, and I don't think people even really notice it. I mean, you're a critic, so you notice these things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think, like, defining a character, because the, the whole movie is sort of this dream world, right, from this very subjective lens of this one character. And um, seeing that world through that lens and thinking, like, okay, well, like, if I were to imagine myself in the future or in the past, like, I would picture myself in my favorite outfit. You know, and I think that that kind of like those defining outfits are kind of like what we honed in on with this stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. Jim, let's talk a little bit about how you prepare for a part like this. I mean, um, you know, you, you talked a little bit about you know, trying to find this character, but it's two characters that you're playing, two very different ones. Um, and, and, and you've also said that you're not a big science person, which I found fascinating, uh, <laughs> that you kind of would, would embrace a story like this. Yeah, um, yeah, no, the so. scariest thing about this script was the science. And because <laughs> to do it right, I would have to have an authentic enthusiasm. So I had to learn all the science that I never learned. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then find an enthusiasm around it, which was fun and you know my youngest son is really into science so and you know this nerd is really into science <laughs> so there was there it was there and and um you know it was a fun challenge as an actor but i mean i i loved uh you know just creating um cameron or finding him in me and uh and some of it was really fun just you know, talking with Ray and Colin, because I, I think this movie is really just a love story, and uh, the hero is Aaron, and that uh, it's just kind of like how we could best serve that story, and um, and so it was, you know, this ongoing discussion. I remember walking along uh, this railroad track with Ray Seahorn as an amazing actor and just you know we were just nerding out we were like all right well, we're gonna ask colin that so it's like every and he's so he's so nice about it. some directors would be like just say the fucking lines <laughs> <laughs> but colin wanted to discuss all of it and it really helped um you know flesh out because we knew that we wanted uh the relationship that that you see at the beginning that is so damaged you wanted uh, people to believe that she does stay, or that, and then she does this heroic thing of really being there for her life partner at the end. And so we wanted to make sure that their relationship was constructed. And then, you, you know, you see pieces of it in the kids' show that they do that, you know, maybe when they were happier, um, maybe when um, he had an optimism about. Um, this show being a success or him being able to achieve dreams but um, I mean I just I love this movie because it is one of those things where I've seen it you know maybe half a dozen times and I take away different things I mean, I'm always kind of weepy at the end but there is something about it's really uh, it, and this is a compliment to Colin that this movie is really uh this, you know, it's almost kind of like the, the most fantastic thing you can do is have a fulfilling relationship, which is the most uncynical thing 
that you could say in this world that we live in that's about to fall apart. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what I, you know, I'm always kind of astounded that that's, that's such a kind of, and we're both Midwestern, I'm like, that's such a Midwestern value. <laughs> like to like, if you could find someone who loves you and will support you, that's great. You know, like, that's what the movie's about. <laughs> yeah, and I'm over here like, like it exists. It yeah. just exists. Uh, but you're young. You don't know that yet. <laughs> I'm young. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, uh, so actually, this was... Um, I did ask him this question earlier, but, but I, I, I do want to ask it again because it was something that I was watching the film again today, earlier. Uh, with my son, who was just turned, who was just turned fourteen, and um, and he had a great line. I mean, he 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 loved the movie, but uh, but I I think maybe about fifteen minutes from the end, he he asked how how did they convince anyone to let them make this movie? Uh, which and I, and I and I, and I want to ask that because I, I do find it fascinating, like how you know it's it's a complex story, and once you see it, you're like, oh yeah, of course it makes sense. It's emotionally there, everything works. The performances are great. But how do you go to someone with something like this, this ambitious, presumably with not a huge budget, and just be like, that's it, that's the movie we're gonna make? Yeah, I mean, look, no one knows how to talk about this movie before you see it. I mean, look, even after, like, try describing this to your friends when you go home, you know what I mean? It's impossible. Um, and I think, it's impossible because people are like, oh, I don't want to give away, and then like, yeah. but like, the twist isn't really everything, and then it's like, you know, like, like I, I saw you on the Colbert show and trying to fumble through oh the plot of this movie. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's not, it's not easy. And so, like, honestly, I think the script was the best tool for that. And um, actually, back in the back, one of the birthday twins, um, Dan Urban back there, was uh, he was one of the first people to read the script in the first place um, back when we were sort of like early, like trying to get it out and around. And um, and he loved it. And it was like years later when eventually, like you know, our other producers came on, blah, 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 but um, it takes people believing it, and I think, like, it's a, you know, it's a commitment to read, like, a 120-page script or whatever, like, it's going to take you a couple hours, maybe, um, and so, like, uh, and that's, in today's age, like, that's a big deal, um, so, like, uh, you know, there was no other way to convince people other than, like, please read the script, and I think a lot of people would sort of shed tears at the end of reading it, and I think that's what people kind of gravitated towards, it's like, oh, I felt things. Um, and that uh, I think was was nice, but again, like you know, I was writing this thing for so long that um, it took so many different forms, and it took so long to have people have that reaction. But yeah, I don't know. People are, I mean, but we made it for you guys to show up to these screenings and actually watch the thing. So like the fact that like we can go around the country, you know, all year to these festivals and like meet you all and like see that there are people showing up for this is huge, and it means a lot as far as, far as like indie films. So like, please tell you, like, it really means a lot. Um, and then we move forward with this movie. You know, I, I would just add, though, I mean, not that I've worked on a million films, but I do think that there was something of, uh, I mean, it's a compliment to you and to the producing team, but, like, I think there was, and, you know, as I look and I see some of, because uh, I recognize the eyes of some of the critics <laughs> because everyone was wearing a mask, <laughs> but there was, um, there, you know, it was that pre-vaccine time where everyone that was there you know, I joke around about wanting to get out of your house, but like, you know, people that were working on this were working on it for the right reasons. You know, and that happens a lot in indie films, but I think there was, there was nothing, you know, super glamorous. I mean, what was it, the best Western? Best Western. <laughs> and, and, but it was, it was one of those things where everyone there was was there for the right reason and um I've been on other films that you know that comes close but I do feel like Linoleum was kind of this special crew of people that were because we didn't even know we were going to finish it right yeah we were like if one of these people <laughs> tests positive it's over <laughs> that dentist guy loses all his money <laughs> yeah yeah it was risky it was definitely risky but i think actually some of that came down to yeah this built a community i think in like a really real way it's like we were forced to be together but everyone was cool with that because nobody had seen anybody else for six months yeah so like you know the fact that we actually got to hang out with other people who were tested and quarantined together we knew none of us had covid so you know, we all hung out in the ballroom and drank cheap beers and whatever, you know, so it was, it was great. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? What's the title significance? 
the titles, the final significance. So, um, what do you think it is? Something that may be like a repeating pattern in the tile. Totally, yeah, it definitely is a repeating pattern. So we actually used the same linoleum flooring in the whole movie. Like every set that we had control of, we brought that same floor in, like in the school, in the basement, in the house, in the, everywhere you could. Um, and uh, that was really, so it really is kind of about like building that fabric of the movie um, and the title itself. The basement of the movie where, you know, the, the elderly sort of Cameron lives down in the basement um, towards the end of the movie. And uh, we, we would sort of call that like the brain of the movie, like where all of those kind of like props and, and things would like kind of exist in other parts of the movie in some way or another. Um, and like, because him looking around the room and him hearing the stories that Aaron was telling him was kind of inspiring what we're seeing on screen. And so, you know, this idea of like, seeing the fantastic within the everyday was like a big deal for us um and that idea of like i mean i was actually looking at like these floors i don't think that's linoleum but it's like some linoleum knockoff like it's like the, these like linoleum is like a very like pervasive um material and it's something that we walk on like every day everywhere in our jobs at schools at hospitals everywhere um and it's also like you know it's kind of like signifying all those life points but also you know, that kind of speckled pattern that, you know, linoleum is kind of known for is very reminiscent of like the cosmos above, but it's sort of below. And so there's like this idea of like walking on through the stars kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's conceptual, of course, but like, I think that that title like immediately makes you start asking questions and observing actively. Um, it's like, wow, what is this title? And then like, see, when you see the floor, it's like you start to sort of like piece that, you know, you're starting to sort of like gather the puzzle pieces. So um, I like that it sort of does that immediately. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, some people like it, some people don't. <laughs> so uh, my wife and I saw Ben in Atlantic City Thanksgiving weekend, and part of his uh, routine dealt with uh, the topics of mortality and death. So after seeing the movie, I'm wondering, did making the movie give you any of the material or ideas for your act? Yeah, I mean, I would uh, say that, you know, my, you know, my aunt who I lost during the pandemic to COVID was somebody who was suffering from dementia. So like there was, I remember when we were shooting it, it was like, cause we had visited her a couple times and, and there was kind of uh, this, uh, but to answer your question, yeah, but I feel like almost the past three years, there's been so much, you know, death, you're going to die in the news <laughs> that it's just eventually it's, and, you know, we kind of block it out, but it's, we've all been touched by it. So that, but that resonated. And then I, I did another movie where I, I played a guy who owned a funeral home too. So that probably influenced it. But. Did you know, do you remember that our, that we were shooting during the election? The yeah. 2020 election yeah. yeah yeah and like we got the results like we're in the middle of a take everyone started like shouting and like running around and it was like no we're still rolling <laughs> <laughs> everyone knew yeah, what was going on. Anyway, yeah. Um, I, I think that's all the time we have for questions uh, thank you so much everybody thank you guys thank you thank guys you. thanks for coming yeah.